Hi, welcome back to my workshop. I'm working on a DIY CNC project and this is part 2 of the series. I wanted to mention some things as addition to my last video. The casting is cast from aluminum and is from 5 to 10 mm thick from place to place with some critical parts much thicker. The YZ axis casting is very heavy and rigid but the main casting is a bit thinner but still plenty rigid as well. The only possible rigidity problem that I've seen right away is the cut in the X axis which does make the outer rail of the X axis a bit unsupported but if it causes problems with vibrations I can still attach one or two angular supports from the main body. I can also fill parts of the casting with epoxy granite for even more vibration dampening as someone also mentioned in the comments in the previous video. But let us first finish the CNC to see how it performs and then make adjustments if necessary. For motors the decision was easy. Since the budget was low I knew that the servo motors are not an option. The closed loop steppers were the best option considering price performance, but since I am electrotechnical engineer, I decided to spice things up a bit. I didn't want to buy the closed loop motor sets because I already designed a very nice stepper driver. It has a lot of options and is based on Trinamic IC with my periphery. If you're interested in that kind of topic let me know in the comments and I can make a video about that. For the CNC I will use NEMA 33 stepper motors with open loop configuration but will later add closed loop linear encoders for direct position measuring. For the mechanical build I first decided to mount the Z-axis ball screw and motor. I already had the motor mount with ball screw and fixed bearing from other machine and I had the nut holder as well. Everything was very precise and I decided to adapt the position of the assembly in the CNC to the parts I had. The motor mount could not be mounted with existing holes so I had to improvise. I had these flats on the casting that were parallel to the Z-axis motion and were big enough to accept the motor mount. I was left with barely enough space for the motor at the back. To mount everything I decided to machine aluminum blocks to serve as an extension that would sit on the flats. Here you can see me probing the back jaw of the vise as well as vise stop that is on the left. I used the DRO with zero position in that corner for most of the further drilling and milling operations.
all the parts were machined and it was time to assemble the first part of the Z-axis assembly. I used the cheap hammer with soft pad on it for tapping things, otherwise I would damage the parts. It was very important that the blocks I machined are mounted very precisely on the motor mount. The critical is parallelism to the upper surface that is also parallel to the ball screw travel. Of course the ball screw will have to be dialed in with the dial indicator to be precisely parallel to the travel, but that will be done in the final assembly. Here I'm only checking roughly with the caliper to get it parallel. Here is the mount for the ball screw nut. It is very precisely machined on the bore, but I had to machine two more blocks to mount it on the YZ casting. I found a long piece of aluminum and machined it flat, then cut it in half and machined the other side flat, then proceeded with drilling the smaller blocks as well as the block for the nut. All the dimensions had to be precisely measured to fit the existing holes in the casting.
there was not enough room between the castings for the whole assembly, so I had to machine 10mm thick spacers for the linear blocks to raise the YZ casting in order for it to clear the motor and motor mount. With that the Z-axis assembly was finished. I'm very happy with the outcome and the placement of all the parts. I will try to regularly share the progress with you guys and would really appreciate the support with subscribing and hitting that like button if you enjoyed the video. Until next time, bye!